What up, cowboy fans and YouTubers? Is that VA Dallas Cowboy fan coming back at you? I'd say thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting down below. But this video isn't therapeutic at all. This is a video that is just going to straight slam this Cowboys organization. Because if you watched the same game I watched last night, we should all be ashamed of following this team. Uh... I'm going to go through position by position with my thoughts on uh, the game. Uh, try to figure out something to make it better. But uh, it all starts from the top. Plain and simple. Uh, there's nothing else we can do as fans, really, other than just not go to the games, not buy the merchandise. Uh, so let's think. Starting with the quarterback position, F. Andy Dalton is not the guy people hated Dak for. All the Dak haters need to apologize to him immediately. Uh, for all the people who said Dak isn't the answer and Dak can't win with this team, is a bunch of bull. Because he has won with this team and is now showing this is 2015 all over again without your starting quarterback. Y'all don't seem to have a clue how to win without your starter so that's out the window Andy Dalton is not the answer the man has no pocket presence whatsoever he's a statue back there he's uh refusing to run see even the stuff back here is falling over Andy is refusing to run when he's got open lanes. Uh, he's not getting rid of the ball in a timely manner. Uh, if you're going into the game knowing your O-line is bad and you lost another offensive lineman, which I'll talk about later, uh, you got to get rid of the ball. You can't sit there and hold it and be taking these sacks or looking crazy in the pocket when you got options to run and you're just refusing to do anything but go down. Is ridiculous. Uh, he can't read a defense because those interceptions, one was not his fault. That was a bad uh, pass interference, no call. But the other one, the Buda Baker, inexcusable. It's like you, you have a time where you're like Dak, where you're just leading your receivers and everybody's just watching your eyes. You're not looking off of safety at all. Uh, all the stuff you were supposed to be able to do. We saw none of it. Not a one. So, next, running backs. Obviously, we're going to talk about Zeke fumbling the ball twice. He was a liability. And they took accountability for those uh, fumbles by actually benching him. He was benched for a couple plays throughout the game, a couple series. And they put Pollard in, but Pollard was no better. Uh, frankly, the... Uh, running game is outmatched when you don't have an offensive line to help you create lanes. They can't do it on their own, and it just showed. Uh, Pollard did show that he he could try to be like a top dog running back, but he's not it. His pass protection is horrible. There was a play where there was an all-out blitz, and as the running back, he's standing right side with his quarterback and when they snapped the play there was an outside man a corner of safety that was blitzing for some reason Pollard went up into the freaking hole and he was standing there looking around like an idiot when he had nobody to block and the guy he should have been blocking ran right past the left tackle and sacked your quarterback you were way out of position it's like you didn't even recognize anybody that was coming your offensive line picked up their guys, but you were completely lost in that and stepping up into the pocket for no reason. You didn't even go out for a check down for your uh, quarterback if he needed it. Uh, in the end, Rico Dowd came in in the end of the game, had a couple of hard runs. Uh, he looked better than Zeke and freaking Pollard, to be honest. And that's a guy who just wanted to get in the game. So, F for running backs. Offensive line, F. 
because we knew going into the game, the offensive line was already bad. <clears throat> and then you lose Zach Martin, one for a shoulder stinger, and then a play later, he comes back, but then he gets lost again by getting hit in the head, and he's out for a concussion protocol. So he's in the league concussion protocol process right now. Even if he was there, that offensive line was trash. So it didn't even matter if he was there or not. These guys are backups and undrafted free agents for a reason. There is no way that any of these guys should be starting. I I'm sorry to say, Brandon Knight, uh, he's probably alone on the left tackle side, but even he had bad plays. Uh, Tyler Biadish, he can't do it all on his own in his rookie year. Connor Williams is supposed to be the shortest hand left on the offensive line, and he was crap. Connor McGovern's finally seeing his action, and he was crap. And we already know Terrence still is just a wet paper bag getting ran through. So, is is nothing happening with the offensive line? Next up, tight ends. F. Well, D. I'll give him a D because Dalton Schultz did come up. He caught his targets when he had to. Uh, but he needed to be more in pass protection <laughs> and run blocking than he could go out and get a pass just because the offensive line was trash. So he couldn't do what he could do because he had to stay in and block for everybody. So they can't get no love because they can't go out and do what they need to do. Uh, next... We'll head to the defense. That's pretty much all the offense. It was just porous as a whole. Defense as a whole is an F. Defensive line, where are you? You're not, not even Alden Smith was seen. Uh, there was a play where it was a screen and you had a lackluster swipe at the ball in the air and that's all you were known for. Y'all put no pressure on Kyler. Y'all had... No kind of presence whatsoever. He had all day to sit back in the pocket and just launch these long balls that most of them he mistargeted. But when he did connect on his nine completions, nine completions for a game, some of these bums he actually connected with because he had all day to sit back there in the pocket and throw them. Y'all had nothing. Uh, next, the linebackers. Oh, Jesus Christ. I know Van Der Esch came back, and he wasn't in the base defense, but Jesus Christ, Jalen Smith is not the answer. <clears throat> I'm sorry to say that's a wasted investment right now. Uh, him and Joe Thomas proved to be nothing. After the first quarter, where the defense looked okay, they regressed. I know they were on the field a lot, but I'm sick and tired of the excuse that you're tired. What the fuck are y'all paid for? You're going to get tired. Stop being little bitches and play the game. You're going to be out on the field. You can't count your offense to do anything now. So get ready to be on the field. Go to the gym. Learn how to get some endurance. Something. Y'all just sitting there acting like, oh, well, we're gassed. So we're just not going to play. We're just going to give up on place. I mean, Jalen Smith, your job when it wasn't somebody crossing into your field of play is to spy on the running back and the quarterback. You, even when there was no running back in the backfield, your whole job was to spy on Kyler Murray and you couldn't even do that. You were taking poor angles. You were over pursuing. You were out of the freaking play. Most of the time when Kyler is taking off and running and getting these first downs, you were just nowhere near him. And that was supposed to be your assignment. F. <laughs> Corners, you saw Hop was actually shut down for most of the game. DeAndre Hopkins and Larry Fitzgerald were not the guys to kill us. It was Christian Kirk in the end uh, until Hop got late, uh, got moving late. But you had uh, Trayvon Diggs, uh, Anthony Brown, and Jordan Lewis. They might have given up some plays, but they weren't backbreakers. Daryl Worley, on the other hand, has had us backbreaking plays fucking every game this season. I'm sick and tired of this motherfucker being on the team. Why is he there? Goddamn, get healthy, Cheeto, because Worley is worthless. This guy is getting burned every game when he's missing his assignment. I don't know how in the world 
you are manned up on somebody and you just let him run past you every single game. Every game. You're not even taking on their main play, their main wide receiver, and you just letting the backups run past you for easy scores. And it's sickening because it's over and over and over on a weekly basis that you're doing this. You're never learning anything. How hard is it to stay man on man on your guy and cover your guy? Stop worrying about Kyler Murray in the backfield. That's not your assignment. You're just letting guys run right past you and you know there's no safety help. So what are you doing? You're always out of position. <clears throat> F and then the safeties. F. There is no safety back there that's doing anything. Xavier Woods, waste of time. Thompson, Wilson, waste of time. These guys are worthless. I don't know what they're there for. You can come in on safety blitzes. You're never getting home. Uh, you're the last line of defense. You barely get in stoppage anywhere on the field. I mean, this is getting ridiculous. I mean, this whole team is enough. Uh... And I'm not just going at the players, because they sorry. The coaching staff is sorry, too. I get it. This is your first year. You're still going through the aches and pains of getting to know these guys. But at some point, you just got to say, you know what? I got to do like Zeke and just bench all of y'all, because you're not doing anything. Really. You're, ha you're showing no hustle. I don't want to hear that bullshit that they're, they're hustling, but they don't know the plays. Of course they don't know the plays. But that don't mean don't hustle. <laughs> They're just out of position because they don't know anything. And how do you constantly, week after week, six weeks in, not know the plays? How do you not know the communication? This is a lack of effort on the teachers getting to the players or the players getting to the coaches. I think there's a huge disconnect that this defense just doesn't want to work with Mike Nolan at all. I know, uh, like E2 Blue said, this is a 4-3 a team trying to play hybrid, but the 4-3s can pull it off. They just don't want to. It's not that hard to just look at the playbook and say, okay, I got to change my way of thinking. This is really how it should be. No, y'all just look at the playbook and say, I'm going to do what the hell I want to do because I don't trust this guy. I don't know this guy, and I'm not going to play his plays. So everybody wants Mike Nolan's head, but I said previously, this is a red shirt year. And I said it's uh, two to three years with this coaching staff before this team could do anything because they're just not the players they want. They're going to have to get rid of players and they're going to have to draft well. And it's going to take a while. We can't, uh, I don't know why we expected immediate success this year. I mean, we were all hyped when we got Mike McCarthy. But we should have known when COVID hit and OTAs and real training camps and everything were thrown out the window that this team just wasn't going to do it. This team had no way of working together when these guys don't even know each other. And you can't you haven't even talked to these guys in person until August. This wasn't going to work. Uh, Kellen Moore needs to stop fucking playing, uh, doing these damn screens. It's not working. Everybody's seeing the screen game. It's not working. The wide receiver screens, running back screens, tight end screens, they're not working. Throw them out your playbook. Stop Stop even trying because those plays are not working anymore. Nobody's falling for it. Uh, you got a straight drop back passer, and he's not mobile, and all the plays you drew up for Dak to make him run, you got to throw those out the window because Andy Dalton can't. He can't do it. He can't execute some plays. And he's not that. Uh, so Kellen Moore, he's going to have to change up his way of thinking. Because the offensive line is not going to give you time to do anything. You're going to have to do nothing but dink and dunk. Hot reads and uh, quick little shots to the flat. Because you're not going to get the chance to do a long ball. They're just not going to give you the time. This offensive line is trash and won't get you there. Uh, Mike McCarthy, everybody wants his head. Uh, I don't know what the hell these fans want. You want to fire everybody, and then what are you going to do? It's like you bring in Bill Belichick, but if he loses, you're going to hate on him. Coaches can only do but so much. They can't magically come in and turn this into a Super Bowl winning team on the first day. 
It's not going to happen. So stop crying for all these coaches to get fired. It's not happening. All right. So that's the players and the coaches. Let's head to the real problem, the front office. Jerry Jones needs to stop. He's not a football mind. We've known that for 30 years. He just, no. Mm -mm. No. Uh, Stephen Jones, thank you for getting the salary cap hell taken care of, but you don't know Jack. Uh, you two coming on radio every fucking week saying everything's fine, you're not going to change anything, is a bunch of bull. Uh, I think you're penny pinching. You don't want to spend the money. Uh, and you keep continuously playing for guys who've obviously not done anything, especially this year. Uh, they've played for their contracts, they got their money, and now they haven't done squat. Really. Uh... I mean, just be honest. The only guy who played for this team that was any good is the guy you didn't pay. You're paying Coop, and he's having less time on the field than any other wide receiver. You paid DeMarcus Lawrence, nowhere to be seen. You're paying Zeke, and he's fumbling everywhere. You paid Jalen Smith. He's never doing anything. You paid Leo Collins. He's on injured reserve. I mean, you paid all these guys on their past production, and once they got paid, they've done nothing. You continuously pay these guys before their contracts come up and they've shown they can't do anything once they got paid. Just the way of the beast. They don't want it. They really don't. Uh, and I'm starting to doubt Will McClay. Other than CD and Van Der Esch, where are the last couple first round picks that have actually done anything for this team? It's been a while. I mean, aside from the offensive line, who were all first round, at one point, first round picks, this offensive line can't co produce anybody that hasn't been a first round pick. McGovern, Williams, they were what, second, third round picks? And they proven they can't really handle anything. The rest of the guys are undrafted free agents. And uh, what, fourth rounder in the fourth round uh, pick in Tyler Biadish? These guys aren't, right now, they're not it. <laughs> Unless you draft in a the freaking offensive lineman in the first round. These guys have shown why they're not that good. Uh, I'm sorry, but Will McClay is... I'm losing faith in him evaluating talent. Because our guys on these back ends aren't doing anything. Once you come out of the first or second round, it's like these guys are crap. <laughs> and that's where it comes from. You got to draft well. That's how the Seahawks build up their team when they were winning. They built them up through the draft, and we can't do that. We've had a problem with free agents. We've had a problem with drafting, and it's killing this team year in and year out that there's a huge drop-off from starters to the next tier. Uh, I don't know who scouted Daryl Worley, but that was a piss-poor idea. Who scouted Ha-Ha uh, uh, Clinton Dix? If he's worse than the safeties we got, then that's saying something. That is saying a lot. Uh, Don Terry Poe, where is he at? Nowhere. He's getting blown out of every play. He's a waste of money. Uh, I mean, this is seriously a problem. These guys are just not it. This team is just not it. There's just something going on that this whole organization is just not working. And it starts at the top. It starts with the Joneses. And when they look in the mirror and they say everything's fine, then they're lying to themselves. They're lying to the fans. And the fans shouldn't stand for that bullshit. Frankly, if I was at that stadium, I'd have walked out. I saw those fans on TV, dude crying, his girl kissing them and trying to make them feel better. Two guys just looking at the team losing and, you know, ah, what's going on? You know what? There ain't no point. Just walk the fuck out. <laughs> It ain't no point to sit there and try to roof with this team because they suck. I don't even have faith on them winning any more games this season. I really don't. I mean, I'll watch the games just because it's something to do, but I don't have but any belief in them actually doing anything this season. Other teams have injuries, and they play harder than you. Other teams have less, and they play harder than you. That's a fucking sign that this team is just sorry. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> From the standpoint of a fan, this team sucks. Every bit of it. It's a shame that you guys call yourselves Cowboys. 
You're living on your past accomplishments that you didn't do. You guys weren't part of any of that. And y'all can't even make your own legacies because y'all suck. You're not even trying to make yourselves better. Uh, Steven and Jerry are just delusional as hell thinking this team is all right by itself when nothing improves week to week. Nothing changes. It, I, you don't look at film. Obviously, you don't look at film session because you sure as hell do the same stupid shit week in to week out. So I don't I don't know what y'all do during the week because you sure as hell ain't practice. I don't know what these reports are, but when you're saying they're practicing in full and whatnot, they must be just going out and doing walkthroughs because you damn sure ain't practicing. Because Mike McCarthy said last week was the best practice sessions they put in all year, and you come out with less points than anything Dak has done. So that's telling you a lot that you're full of shit, that you all are full of shit. <laughs> that's the best practice y'all have had all season, and then you come out and lay a dud. That tells you a lot. Oh, I don't want to hear that bullshit. <laughs> but I'm tired of ranting. There's nothing else to cheer for for this team. Uh, in the end, you got tanking and just losing because they already look like they don't care. Or attempting to act like y'all want to win. Which doesn't matter because y'all still look like y'all don't care. <laughs> if I had to choose... I'd rather y'all just go ahead and get the draft picks, to be honest, because you winning the division and playing in the playoff just to lose it in the fucking first round like you always do to have a higher draft pick just fucks you up for a good player in the draft. If you just go ahead and just lose now, you're better in position. You can actually draft a defensive tackle. You can draft a high ranking safety. If you worry about oh, let's make the playoffs and lose in the first round, then you can forget getting a quality player because you're going to end up picking in the late teens, the 20s. And by the time y'all pick, most of the good players are already gone. And you're going to be like, damn, I wish we had that guy. Oh, damn, I wish we had that guy. Well, guess what? Uh, You could have had Buda Baker. Yeah, you could have had Buda Baker, but y'all... Did not care about emphasizing the safety position. And now he's with the Cardinals beating your ass. Funny how that works. It seems like every week we play a team that has somebody we passed on in the draft. And they come back to bite us in the ass. Funny how that works, huh? Will McClay, Stephen Jones, Jerry Jones. Bad drafting. No emphasis on real players. And... It's just coming back to bite us in the ass every week, week in and week out. There's somebody we missed on the draft and they're biting us. Uh, and lastly, it's no point to even bring it up, but the ref screwed us again. We have momentum going and if you can't clearly see C.D. Lamb getting tackled and wonder why he's on the ground when your defender's wide open for an interception... That tells you the refs just don't care to look either. They don't give a damn. But then give a ticky-tack pass interference call later on in the game when you barely graze the guy's back. Refs are full of it too. I don't know how human error could be that damn blind. Uh, and CD, when, not CD, uh, Michael Gallup, when you have a pass thrown, it hits your hands in the end zone, you catch the goddamn ball. You guys are all starting to get lazy, too. And y'all supposed to be three number one wide receivers? I don't see it. I don't see the hustle. I don't see the giddy up. I don't see anything. Y'all said y'all dedicated this season to Dak. You aren't the Lakers. The Lakers had star players. The Lakers had momentum. The Lakers had that intensity to want to win. They had the will to win. <coughs> They overcame turnovers, they overcame losses, they overcame everything, and they won. This team has no comparison to the Lakers. You have stars, but you guys don't act like it. There's no LeBron on this fucking team. There's no Anthony Davis on this damn team. There's no Rondo. Hell, you guys are the bench players right now if you compare the Cowboys. This is pathetic. But... 
that's all I got to rant about. If y'all made it this far in the video, thank you. Now that all that's out, you can like, share, subscribe, and comment down below with your opinions. This is VA Dallas Cowboy Fan done ranting for now. Hope you have a great Tuesday. <sighs> On to Washington. Y'all take care. Peace.